Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some really fascinating stuff. First up, Anthony Pompliano sits down with Robert Kiyosaki and they talk about Bitcoin and gold and everything else. And it was a fascinating uh, interview and it just made me realize just how close all the people who are into gold and all the people who are into Bitcoin are really close together and there's no reason why we should be arguing also. Someone just placed a massive 18 million Bitcoin buy order to prevent Bitcoin from crashing to zero. 18 million Bitcoin buy order. And on top of that, there was a record number of Bitcoin that were recently withdrawn from exchanges. Hint, hint, it is one of my least favorite exchanges of where they were all withdrawn from. And I, for one, thought this would happen. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. It is uh, July 10th, 2 o'clock Texas time. It looks like Bitcoin is holding strong, 92.35, and it's up by a whopping 0.2% or 1.6 for a seven-day average. So fantastic. Ethereum is at 0.0, uh, gain for 24 hours at 239. Heather's Tether XRP just dipped below 20 cents. So hey, not too bad. Bitcoin Cash, and then there's Cardano sitting around there at that six spot. I was telling um some friends of mine, I thought that Cardano would actually uh, do a little bit more pumping for this week, especially what was going on with the Shelly Mainnet launch and the different things that we had talked about as far as Cardano actually being listed on Coinbase. But uh, I was not 100% correct. And actually, it's actually gone down to zero point, uh, almost 11 cents, 12 cents. And uh, that's just how it goes. And I'm glad that when we talked a couple of days ago, we had talked about FOMO and I had told everybody that even as long as I've been in, I'm still susceptible to FOMO. Uh, and I was actually thinking about, hey, maybe I should just go, you know, put in like a couple thousand dollars into Cardano because you never know. And I re then I remembered that's not the plan. The plan is not to do the same thing we did in 2017. So, so snap out of it. Glad I didn't do it. And we're going to take a look at my actual Voyager uh, app account. And I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So that'll be at the end. Don't miss that. And then moving down 3% for Binance coin. Woo, nice. Uh, Chainlink, 4.3%. I got to tell you, Chainlink is on a tear. It's it's at $6.70. I'm pretty sure that is the all-time, all-time high. So anybody who has ever invested in the Chainlink at any moment is now in the money. So congratulations to everybody there. And then uh, VeChain still makes those impressive gains up 84% for the week. I got to tell you, it's looking pretty good. All right, let's jump into today's top story. So first up, uh, Anthony Pompliano uh, sat down with Robert Kiyosaki on his podcast uh, via, you know, distance wise. But uh, it was a pretty fascinating um, look into the mind of of how an older type investor would actually, you know, think about these things. And our newer type investor, uh, someone who is on the younger generation might think about these things. Not that I'm making generalizations. I mean, I'm on the older side, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it was interesting. And I got to tell you, when I heard the whole thing, I'm like, why? Why do gold people argue with Bitcoin people? It makes no, it makes absolutely no sense. And uh, when we get into it, uh, I'm going to try to make my point here a little bit more clear. But so if you're not familiar with Anthony Pompliano, uh, I always like to say, you know, who is this person? Who is this guy? Who is this gal that we're, that, uh, we're talking about? And where is their legitimacy? So let's let Anthony Pompliano tell you exactly who he is and why he's uh, pretty qualified to talk about the cryptocurrency space. Yeah, so I uh, played football in college, uh, was in the U.S. Army for a while, uh, did a deployment overseas to Iraq, um, came back, built two small technology companies, uh, then went out and ran a number of product and growth teams at uh, Facebook uh, and Snapchat, and then uh, started investing full time at the end of 2015 and um, got started in uh, in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency uh, by building mining facilities. So kind of you think of them as data centers, uh, but specifically running uh, hardware and software for, uh, for running these networks. And uh, from there, pretty much decided to focus almost exclusively on it. And, uh, and we get here today where somehow people are listening to, uh, to me explain what, uh, what all this is in and why it's important. So there you go. I think uh, we'll give him credibility. Sounds like he's been in the game for quite some time and a uh, nice little background. So that just kind of lends itself to like, who is this guy talking so we can kind of breathe a little bit easier. All right. So next up, we're going to talk about, and this was what Robert said. He said, you know, what do you tell stubborn old investors to make them understand? And when he talks about, you know, the difference between uh, Bitcoin and gold, I, it just it just makes me think like this is the exact thing, same things we should all be talking to. And depending on how old you are, I, I've got a lot of younger 
uh, viewers and they talk to me about, you know, I can't get my dad to understand. I can't get my mom to understand. And so if, if you're watching this, uh, this could probably help you out uh, to like explain this to your parents or your grandparents or whoever else that you're trying to, you know, bring into the fold of cryptocurrency digital assets. So let's just take a listen. I think that what you've got to start with is uh, whenever you look at financial markets, um, especially a, kind of a macroeconomic standpoint, uh, there's problems and solutions, right? And, and actually what ends up happening is uh, precious metal uh, investors and cryptocurrency investors, they actually agree on most of the problems, right? So it, there, there's no secret that, hey, look, if you print a lot of money, the currency gets devalued, right? There's no secret that uh, there's high level of uh, corporate debt and, and the federal balance sheet's out of control and all of those things. Uh, for the most part, there's agreement. So I won't spend a ton of time on that. The question then is, what do you do? Right. And, and I think that uh, where there's agreement on the solutions is this idea of sound money principles. Right. right. And, and so whether it's gold, silver or Bitcoin, they all have various aspects of uh, sound money principles. The big question just becomes, you know, gold has, let's say, 5000 years of a track record. Bitcoin has 11 years. So, of course, there's going to be a hesitancy when it comes to something like Bitcoin. My kind of pitch to people is, look. The one thing that um, has a, uh, an advantage, I think, from Bitcoin or, or the most important advantage is there's full transparency and the verifiability of Bitcoin. So you know exactly how much exists, exactly how much is being produced every day. And kind of the supply side of the supply and demand equation is known with 100 percent certainty. And so it's just a matter of uh, generational divide, right? Older folks usually aren't used to kind of touching all the digital technologies. Younger people are. Um, and, and so you kind of pick your asset, but they both have sound money principles. Uh, and I actually think both of them will do well coming out of, uh, out of this economic crisis. So it makes sense though, right? I mean, what he talks about is like, if you are into gold or silver or precious metals, there's no reason why you can't take a look at Bitcoin or cryptocurrency digital assets and go, well, that's the same thing, right? Because I mean, there's nobody really manipulating it. I mean, governments are out there just printing you all willy nilly and no big deal, quantitative easing. You can't quantitative ease uh, gold. You can't do that with silver. You can't do that with Bitcoin. You just can't not do that. So when he talks about these things, I'm like, why are we arguing? I don't understand. And like when he says it, he goes, this is my pitch. And it's kind of a long pitch. And it kind of gets to what I was talking about uh, a couple of weeks ago or about a week ago, uh, where I wanted to simplify the whole process for everybody and what I called a Bitcoin uh, elevator pitch. So the reason I made this elevator pitch was to simplify the whole process, because when you're starting to learn about this, or even if you've been in it for, for years, even, even this was a problem for me when I was trying to explain to some of my friends, I would over uh, indulge or I'd, I would over talk about uh, what Bitcoin was. And they're like, what? I don't, I don't get it. And they, I would just see their eyes glaze over and that was it. So if you, you know, want to get a pitch to somebody, uh, or especially like you want to make your parents understand and grandparents understand, your loved ones understand, your kids understand, or whatever it is, uh, this is how I always, uh, I'm saying it right now. And you, you're free to take out anything or add anything you want to, but this is just how I uh, can simplify it to the best of my abilities, which is, hey, uh, this is what Bitcoin's all about. If you don't know it, Bitcoin is digital gold. I know I always say, you know, don't, you know, people say, well, it's not gold because da, da, da. I get it, but just a frame of reference. It's digital gold. It's scarce, just like gold. There's only 21 million and it's like market insurance in case all the craziness that's happening with the quantitative easing goes down. Unlike gold, you can send it to anyone, anywhere within minutes for next to nothing. It's the best performing asset class ever. It's better than gold, oil, or any stock ever. It used to be worth a nickel. Now it's worth over about 10,000 10, or whatever it is that when you're talking to them. And that's why I'm heavily invested. So if they want to learn more about, you know, uh, fungibility and decentralization and about the nodes, that's great for later on. But just to get them like to understand the basics, this is what I say. Anyhow, the next part was uh, pretty fascinating to me because he talks about quantitative tightening. And I had no idea that uh, America was actually trying to do that. And they had done that, you know, 12 years ago. So let's just take a listen real quick. And actually, before before I hit play, Robert's going to make a good point. He's going to talk about because this is all the things that are happening in the economy is pretty concerning. So when he talks about, hey, watch out for these, you know, uh, commercial real estate, because once real estate starts to collapse, then other parts start to collapse. And we're kind of seeing that happen in the economy. So what he's going to talk about here is the Mall of America and how they've actually defaulted. Even though they're a huge company, uh, they shouldn't have to default because that was the whole point of this quantitative easing. So let's take a listen. You know, a couple of days ago, the Mall of America, one of the biggest shopping centers in the world, 
just said they missed two payments of $1.2 billion a month. Imagine having a mortgage of $1.2 billion. So they missed two payments. The question is, who were those payments going to? And who's going to bail them out? And the Fed has to bail them out. In my opinion, they're going to have to print more money. And would you agree with that theory? So, I mean, look, whenever you get in these situations, that there's two things that are important to understand, right? I, I always say that uh, the U.S. economy is addicted to stimulus the same way that a crack addict is addicted to crack, right? Yeah. You literally can't function without it. And, and we saw that when they tried to do some quantitative tightening, um, you know, back in 2018. And then the second piece of this is uh, any time that you get into these recessionary periods, they only have two tools, right? The central bank can only um, manipulate the interest rate or they can print more money. And so they're using the tools they have, but they've already gone to 0% interest rates. They claim they're not going to go negative. So it's just a matter of how much do you print? So yeah, that is the big question. How much are they going to print and how much debt are we going to have to go into moving forward? So I don't know the answer to that. I'm not an economist and it's just too complex to really um, put my finger on it and, ex and exactly say what it can be. So that's why I always depend on the wisdom of the crowd. So whatever you have, uh, as far as like your thoughts, put in the comment section below and let's finish up this, uh, this article or this uh, interview. The last piece here is why this was the most interesting, I think, uh, to me. Because it talked about like all the things that we know about Bitcoin, all the things we know about cryptocurrency, digital assets. There was just one thing uh, that got Robert Kiyosaki into it, and it was the having. So he realized the importance of this quantitative tightening, this hardening of Bitcoin. And he said, this is what is going to drive uh, this whole uh, asset class into the stratosphere. And when I just heard that part, and then the next part that Anthony's going to talk about here, I just thought to myself, why in on God's green earth is gold people, gold bugs, and Bitcoin arguing. I, I just, it just blows my mind. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Monetary supply schedule. Well, so, so, so let, me use, let me use all guys' language here. The Fed is centralized banking. So central is also communist. You know, you know, command and control of a central government. That's communism. Whereas what Bitcoin, gold, and silver are, they're, they're, they're not controlled by anybody. So one of the reasons back in 72 when I started buying gold was because the Fed couldn't mess with it. They do mess with it to some degree, but they can't print a lot of it. You know, and that's what I don't like about saving dollars. So when so explain why it's programmatic, but why, I call it people's money because there's, no, there's not one person like Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, who can say today it's going to do this, tomorrow it's going to do it. It's already been planned out for years, right? Exactly how many coins are coming out. Yeah, I mean, look, if you look at, let's say, the ECB Board of Governors, there's like 25 people that go in a room and make a decision, right? The Fed, I think it's, you know, about 12 people go in a room and they make a decision. And so, you know, I, I've got a friend who always says there's 12 people making the decision for a minimum of 330 million people's money. Right. That just kind of doesn't sit well with younger people. And so when you look at something like Bitcoin, there's computer code that was written. That computer code can only be changed if more than 50 percent of the people on the network agree to change it. So there you go right there. So all those things that, that they're talking about, it just totally makes sense. Like if you're talking about precious metals. And you talk about the, the whole reasoning behind it. And I know that it's been around for thousands of years and Bitcoin and cryptocurrency has only been around for like 10 or 11 years. But I mean, the whole principles of what he's talking about and why it was created and what it is supposed to do, I just don't understand why, uh, you know, somebody like Peter Schiff is so adamantly against Bit or, uh, Bitcoin and he's so much for gold. I mean, I, I, I mean, I understand that he has his own, his own trust and he's trying to sell gold, whatever else. But in reality... Um, does he have to be that hard of a stance against it? And not just him, but there's a lot of gold uh, people out there the same way. But uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. But again, I don't, I don't see the argument. I always say that you know, in 2020, the savings account really should be uh, gold, silver, Bitcoin. If you have that, I mean, that takes care of everything. All right, let's move on. So next up, someone placed uh, 18 million Bitcoin buy order. And this isn't a really uh, serious article. It's just uh, kind of made me think and made me laugh. Uh, so I thought I'd just throw it in there. So 
What's going on is that uh, anti-Bitcoin people who think Bitcoin could one day become worthless is a falsehood. One of these peoples is the gold boat Peter Schiff, we'll talk about that, who claims gold is much more poised to win as a store of value than Bitcoin. Sure, maybe. There's a person named Alistair Milne, investor and entrepreneur who focuses on Bitcoin and startups, and he's also the CIO of uh, Altana, a digital currency fund. And in a tweet, Alistair announced that he has opened an order book on Bitfinex to buy all of the 18 and a half million Bitcoins currently on the market. Alistair wants to own all the Bitcoin in the market if the crypto ever drops to a penny. And then he just says here, this revelation challenges the, pro the projections of people like Peter Schiff and investor Jim Rogers, who have been anti-Bitcoin for a long time, claiming the top coin is destined for a zero value, <laughs> dollar value. So again, if anybody ever says, well, Bitcoin's going to zero, you can always just respond in your tweet and you're on your Facebook, on a YouTube comment, it'll never go to zero because uh, <laughs> Alistair Milne is going to buy it up for a penny. Anyhow, I just thought it was funny. Let's move on. And last up, I thought this was uh, pretty interesting because a record number of Bitcoin were recently withdrawn from exchanges. So what's going on here? July 8th set a year-to-date record for the number of net Bitcoin withdrawn from custodial exchanges. The onslaught was led by Coinbase. Uh, and if you've been following the channel uh, for any length of time, you know that I'm not a big fan of Coinbase, especially with uh, the fees. Um, also, on top of that, all the different outages that they've had. They've had four outages in three months, and that was especially during when Bitcoin would go up or down to $500, so it would leave people out in the cold. That plus that they're also working with the IRS, which is fine, and the DEA, which is fine. But again, like how much, you know, uh, surveillance do they want from us? Look, I always say the same thing. I've been paying taxes since I was a 15 year old kid. We've all gone through the KYC. You've gone through the AML. Me and you've gone through all this stuff, right? We get a 1099, we report to the IRS, and da 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 da. But I mean, how much is, I mean, when does it stop? So, I mean, all these things, I'm not a big fan of Coinbase. And actually, it's been so much of a pain, uh, not a pain, but uh, these things that have been happening with Coinbase that I actually started a second playlist which just talks about all the different uh, defaults and problems that Coinbase has. It's just called Coinbase outages. And I only have two playlists. One is my essentials, which I talk about the exit strategies and scams and different exchanges to use and all those things, which people, I mean, everybody I think should know as far as like the essentials of cryptocurrency digital assets. And I've had that forever. And then as of like three weeks ago, I had to make one more playlist, which just kind of tracked all the different problems with Coinbase. So if you ever want to find out what's going on, Check that playlist. Anyhow, so a bullish sign. So yesterday, 20,660 more Bitcoin removed from exchanges than deposited according to data from Glassstone. This represents 2020's biggest daily outflow of Bitcoin from exchanges, a behavior pattern that is typically bullish. So um, just a real quick lesson. Uh, if people are are taking money from their cold wallets and putting them onto exchanges it sometimes not always but sometimes means that people want to sell like crazy because they got to have an off ramp but if they take it off the exchanges that means they want to just sit on it and uh, be holdlers and hopefully it'll go up so when we see things come off usually it means or sometimes it means that it's actually a good sign we might see an actual uh, price increase for bitcoin which hey that'd be awesome Anyhow, Coinbase leads the exodus. Interestingly, Coinbase alone experienced a net outflow of 20,000 plus Bitcoin, which is higher than the total for all exchanges. So the rest of it just goes over data and it's kind of boring. So I'm just going to tell you like this. Um, with Coinbase having all the different problems, of course, people are going to take their Bitcoin off. And we did another video about this, right? We talked about 22,000 Bitcoin had been taken off the exchange not too long ago. And they said, no, 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 uh, it's, it's not because of that. It's because of these uh, these custodial accounts and blah, blah, blah. Well, here we go again. The same type of thing. And I think people are finally getting wise to the fact that, hey, Coinbase uh, may not be the end-all be-all. And that's a problem. Now, I will say this. For when I got into it, Coinbase made it super simple, and I got to appreciate that because mass adoption is only going to come when things are super easy to do. When my mom, who has totally not tech savvy, can actually get to buy Bitcoin and actually use it, uh, that's when I'm like, that's when mass adoption is going to happen. So Coinbase makes things very simple, and with that simplicity, unfortunately, sometimes caught, uh, is outages and also high fees, and that's just how it is. Now, you can go to Coinbase Pro. But that's not for simple people, 
right? That's not for simpletons, <laughs> simpletons like myself. So um, I always look for what is actually going to be very easy. And uh, I found some things and uh, one of those is Voyager. I highly recommend it. But um, I always think it's interesting with, with Coinbase, you know, how they're doing all these things. And, and, and as bad as their customer service and everything else is, there is one more story here. And that is that Coinbase is actually uh, talking about going public. We've heard about it for a while, but that's what tech companies do. They they go public so they can make more money, and that's just how businesses work. So uh, I'm not going to get into the weeds with this one, uh, but I wasn't surprised to hear about it. So Coinbase, at some point, maybe the end of the year, maybe next year, will probably go public. I think that'll be great for uh, mass adoption, for people actually understanding like, whoa, wait, this huge tech company went public, and how much is it worth? And what is it selling? Uh, coin it's your it's an exchange for a crypto I don't know what that is I should probably figure that out so just with the IPO I think and everything going public that'll be good for cryptocurrency obviously um, I won't invest in it but uh, sure whatever anyhow going back I had promised I was gonna take a look at my actual Voyager account because uh, if you don't know in the um, uh, description of every one of my videos there's going to be a uh, spreadsheet or a link that looks like this and that's going to take you to the exchange fees and wallets and all these different things that we have here uh, these are all of the different uh, exchanges that I have used or am currently using and this is also uh, all wallets and apps and CFI and DeFi and all the things that I actually of use and I kind of break it down into you know uh, the different fees and if they dollar cost average and some notes and of course there's also some things here called affiliate links now you don't have to use the affiliate links to sign up you can just go right to Coinbase or right to Gemini and you can sign up but I will tell you this if you don't use the affiliate link uh, you don't get the $10 or $25 or whatever else it is. So it's up to you. But uh, I will say uh, Voyager, I've just been using it for three days and I'm super impressed with it. Um, they don't pay me to talk about it. And if you don't want to use the affiliate app, you don't, or affiliate link, you don't have to. But I use it right now and it's awesome. It's like the next, I think it's like the next step to mass adoption because it makes things so darn simple. Voyager and Celsius themselves, super simple things. I both I think have a different function. One is great for an on ramp, uh, the other one's great for CFI or you know centralized finance as they call it. And uh, I mean the CEO is fantastic, Mashinsky. That guy's on fire. But let me show you what my Voyager uh, app looks like on the inside and how I'm actually doing with the uh, dollar cost average stuff. All right, so let's uh, jump into my phone real quick. Take a look. Uh, here's me and my wife at uh, one of our very few vacations because she had to drag me there because I just like to work too much. And uh, let's just go to crypto and slide over to Voyager. Open this up. All right, so pretty easy. Let's go to my portfolio. I'll hit in the bottom right-hand corner. And you'll notice that I've got a whopping 51 cents in cash, but Bitcoin, Cardano, and VeChain, you'll see the values, the price, and the average cost, which is nice to see because I dollar cost average. So uh, for like two or three days, actually three to three days now, I've been using Voyager. I love it. And uh, every day I don't FOMO in and just go in heavy I dollar cost average and what that allows me to do is not to get caught short because you know who knows what was going to happen with cardano we talked about this in one of our last videos so i said do not fomo in dollar cost average and hopefully everybody listened but it's pretty nice because it's going to tell me right here after the percentage change the profit and loss which so i'm losing a little bit here but here's my average cost that i got actually into so this is good it means i didn't like hit it uh, by cardano uh, at 0 0.15 or VeChain at 0 0.02. So nice. So now we're going to scroll up to uh, the top in a little bit. And let's see the actual history. So here's what I've been doing. Uh, I just buy every day and I buy about 100 or 75 uh, VeChain or Cardano. And I just spend dollar cost averaging. Here's my transfers. So you can see like everything is just pretty much there. And it's taken out via ACH out of my bank account, which is nice because I don't have to, you know, wire money in, which always sucks. And here's all the different types of um, uh, coins that are available. I and mean, we got a lot. Neo, VeChain, Atom, Dash, Zcoin, uh, Maker, Dogecoin, if I want to buy Doge right now. And what's great about this is I can buy Doge but see the little thing that says set up recurring buy. So I'm going to try, let's try 25 or yeah, 25. And then, uh, or how about this? Let's 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 add 100. And we're going to select the frequency of how often I'm going to do this on my recurring buys. I want daily, weekly, monthly. So I click daily 
I can click Friday, Saturday, whatever else. And then, so weekly on Thursday, and I'm going to slide to schedule it, and off I go. If I was going to do that, which I did not do. So recurring buys are nice because it just kind of like set it and forget it, and you don't have to worry about it, which is great. So also here's a, it says invite a friend and earn Bitcoin. So we're going to click on that. Super simple, right? So there's your code, but to make it even easier, just click on the left hand where it has the text message option. And you can send it to all any friend. And it says right here, use the code 5204NP or just click on this link. And just to note real quick, uh, you cannot download this on your desktop or on your laptop. It only works on a phone. So you have to have an Android or an iPhone. So the only time you have to use that 5204 is uh, if someone tries to download it to their computer. Anyhow, let's go back. So here again, we have all our different things. And here we've actually, in the settings, you can check a look at your recurring buys. Here are mine, uh, so I can just kind of see them. I can add, or I can get rid of, I can also add a bank account, uh, which is pretty simple. I love this because Voyager uses Plaid. I just uh, put my username and password, and then they answer some security, security questions, and off I went, and I uh, um, attached my USAA bank to it, and it was like super simple. All right, so one more thing. Let's take a look at uh, how easy it is to sell something. So let's go to Bitcoin. We're just gonna, sell bitcoin click on that and then uh, let's try for zero i don't know one zero zero and you can't kind of change it over to for dollars but it kind of does it for you so let's try to sell nine dollars 19 cents and it's going to ask me to slide and i do that and click submit unfortunately you have to do at least ten dollars so no big deal um let me just go back real quick let's try two zero 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 and let's sell about 18 and slide it and submit it and off we go then we'll click on uh, view history or go back and it's going to show us right here bam there it is 1890 already done it's super fast super easy love this thing and before we take off let me just make note that uh it says that it's free crypto trading but there's a reason why they say it's free and uh you know this is a business and they have to make money so exactly how my question always is well how do you make money that's the big question so this is from taking right from their website i'm going to link it in the description below but it states when our founding team first looked in the crypto trading market they were shocked there's no uh what's called an nbbo or national best bid and offer nbbo is a regulation that requires brokers to guarantee their customers best execution on their trades best execution focuses on delivering against these pillars of trading price speed liquidity and reliability there is no regulation requiring crypto trading platforms to honor nbbo that's why you have things like coinbase because they're like hey we don't have to and uh, you're gonna pay the fees anyhow so orders are typically confined to one isolated exchange coinbase kraken whatever else you want to use separating customers from the majority of the crypto trading market Voyager uh, uses a smart order router, is engineered to unify the fragmented market and allows investors to access liquidity from a broader pool of sources all in one app. So take a look at all the different exchanges and what's going on and get the best prices for you. Kind of like Trivago or uh, Booking.com or something like that. So multiple exchanges. By doing this, we're aggregating the largest crypto liquidity pool in one place. Our exchange connectivity offers investors competitive prices on their trades and faster, more reliable execution. Competitive pricing due to the global and sometimes volatile nature of the crypto. There are significant price discrepancies across exchanges. Voyager searches the market for a better price, so you don't have to. Our say the art router is continuously monitoring the crypto market and works tirelessly to achieve best execution, even if that means filling an order across multiple exchanges. Interesting. Voyager achieved price improvement on nearly 90% of orders. Commission-free trading. Our dynamic smart order router identifies inefficiencies in the larger crypto market and takes advantage of pricing disparities to save our customers money. We take a fraction of the savings, referred to as the spread, and pass the rest on to our customers. So if everybody's like, oh, they're taking the spread, they're doing this and that, listen, they're still doing, they're, you're still making out like a bandit. You're still doing a lot better than you would on normal exchanges. And it actually works out in the better. So they're going to do all the work. They're going to find the best price. And you're going to, you know, get a good deal. So, hey, why not? Anyhow, this allows Voyager to operate commission-free and keeps us motivated to save customers money on orders. And I like that. Commission-free trading allows investors to maximize investments, buy as much liquidity as you want free. Great. And uh, I was always like, well, how do they do this? You know, how do they get all this thing done? And just so you know, I'm not going to go into a big story, but the CEO of Voyager was the CEO of E-Trade 
and that's how they kind of know all the ins and outs of how to do these things so again sometimes it is what you know uh, and but it looks like they probably made uh, some pretty good inroads so all right so that's it for today's video hey I want to say thanks for sticking with me I know it's a bit longer apologize but a lot of stuff going on um, real quick there underneath here is a join button uh, if you click on join, uh, you don't get anything special, uh, but I will just tell you this, that the level two that I used to have, uh, that actually was deprecated yesterday. So uh, there is no level twos where I'm going to give shout outs to people because I feel that every minute counts. And I think that what's going on is that we need to focus on things like scam of the day. We need to focus on the different projects that are going to uh, help build us. So, I mean, I appreciate everybody that has donated. I really do. Uh, but I think that we want to try to get away and do some more things. And like I said, every minute counts. So until the end of the month, uh, we're still going to do level twos and level ones and all that stuff. Um, so I'll give the shout outs. But level ones, that'll always be around. That's if you want to give a tip. Uh, that's for the join button. Uh, you don't get anything special. I'll probably do uh, so just random shout outs for all of my uh, people that uh, uh, donate so that's good but level twos for right now all right soft thanks when mullet myself who else dave Plummer, the uh straight talking guy grant Sharman, bruce wood baking benjamins noel flipping vegas martin lewin michael ralph william howell crazy crypto canuck tessie ryosaki positive truck llc jc durex Matt Slack, John Miller, The Office, El Merg, Michael Jeffrey, The Kell Show, Andrew Herrera, Terry Prospery, EOS UK, Whatever, AE, and Hero Soap Company. They make soap. And uh, that's it. So uh, also, just so you know, my email is Dan Digital Asset News with an S. Dan Digital Asset News is a scammer, so uh, please avoid him like the flake. <laughs> and, that's, and that's it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.